Oh boy! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're gonna be doing something super cool. As you guys know, I just recently bought this 100 acres, and currently we have no feeders over there for deer, for the wildlife, and it's time to fix that. Now, I got a wild hair on my butt last night, and I actually went ahead and built out two feeders. Now these feeders that I built are actually the same feeders that we run down at my hunting property and I built both of these feeders. These are four to six hundred pound feeders and I built them for under two hundred and fifty dollars a pop. So let's go ahead let's roll the montage and when we get done with the montage we got to get these things painted. <laughs> boys check them out so i did throw some paint on this one that's not the paint we're going with but uh we got them on the legs this feeder itself right here let me back up this thing is massive peter go stand next to that thing that's a big joke. is that not huge i'm six two <laughs> six two that's a 600 pound feeder right there this one over here is like i guess it's a normal 55 gallon drum so it's 350 to 400 from what i've read on the internet but not compared to this big joker now i've had all the parts to put these together for a while and i just haven't gotten around to doing it because you kind of need two hands to get it in the inside the barrel and tighten these bolts down as you guys seen from the footage it was uh, a lot of crawling in and out of barrels for old bp i don't know if i said this earlier but i built both of these feeders are roughly 225 a piece and compared to what you can buy online for a 400 600 pound feeder i think moultrie has one of these 55 gallon drum feeders for like 450 dollars and we built these for 250 and that one's gonna hold a lot more corn too i'm sure i'll be building more of these in the future so if you guys want a how-to video let me know but let's go ahead we gotta get these things painted so for paint options we got black and then this camouflage tan. Now we're not gonna do your typical and paint these camouflage. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna paint the legs black, we're gonna paint the barrel tan, and then we're gonna paint the top black. So we'll have black, black, tan, black. And then what I wanna do is I wanna get a cut out of my logo, the BP Hunt Co logo, and stencil it onto the barrels. I think that'd be super sick. Black will run all the way through and have that mix of tan. Should look pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and get these feeders down to ground level so we can work on them. So let's go ahead and let's get started. boys we have got done painting the deer feeders and they have came out beautiful peter buddy how, how do you think they came out dude couldn't done them any better we took something from nothing yeah. and now we can bring them Bro, to the property 250 dollars i have in these cheap. so remember these are just like barrels legs paint and a wild game innovations little deer feeder spinner thing you know so these are 12 volt feeders just remember when you look at these these cost me 220 dollars to make check them out baby yes sir that's what i'm talking about we took a stencil we did a little bit of a little 
BP Hunt Co. on there, looking pretty juicy. These feeders are gonna be absolutely perfect. These little boxes, you put a little 12 volt battery right in there, hook it up, and you can set these feeders to go off whenever you want and feed whatever amount of corn you want them to feed. A regular barrel like this one, I've read that they hold 400 pounds of corn. I don't quite believe it. I feel like it's more like 350, but if we're going off what the internet says, this is a 400 pound feeder. This one, that's a 600 pound feeder. There's a whole barrel and a half. Now it is super tall, so it's gonna be fun loading it up with corn, but uh, this one will be pretty easy. I mean, you could probably load that one from the back of a truck. Oh yeah, we jump in the back of the Fender, like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, Might have to toss the bag up <laughs> and get it in there. But I really wanted to get deer feeders down at the new property. Now turkey season is literally coming in. I think this Saturday here in North Carolina. So there's not many turkeys over at the new property, and I don't really want to hunt them. But I also don't want to put corn in these feeders and then not be able to hunt that property the entire turkey season because they're feeding corn. You can't hunt over bait or even around bait turkey hunting. So we're gonna go ahead, load these things in the back of the truck. We're gonna take them to the new property, get them out of my backyard, and that way when we're ready to set them up down at the property they are already there and we can put them where we want them and fill them up with corn but that's not the only thing we're going to do today you guys are going to want to stay tuned but let's go ahead and get these things down to the property <music> Hopefully we didn't scratch the paint too bad. Luckily it's just spray paint. We can just put some more paint back on. This little feeder is a lot easier to manage, which is real nice. But these things came out absolutely sick. I'm stoked for these things. The reason you want feeders on your property, even if you're not a hunter, who doesn't love wildlife? Right? And these things will provide so much food for wildlife. I mean, these things, there's gonna be wildlife around these things every single day. And you know, your typical feeder, uh, this feeder from like Moultrie is like $450. Yeah, no. We built it for $250. That's pretty slick right there, baby. Now, like I said, we're not gonna be putting corn in these things in this video. We'll probably do another video of setting these things out and actually setting up deer stands and whatnot. But since turkey season's coming up, I got a super sick 410 that I got set up last year for turkey hunting. It's not sighted in. We gotta get the thing dialed in because turkey season's right around the corner and I know you guys want to see some turkeys die this year. I bought a bunch of big gravity feeders but the first 600 pound gravity feeder that I was getting I was paying like 600 something dollars. That is just too much. When you have nice feeders like this I mean I got $500 and two super sick feeders. This property this hundred freaking acres boys I mean I'm trying to make it a wildlife paradise. We got the ponds down there. Let's let's go check on the ponds real quick. Let's start up the truck and ride over there. Little pond update. We still got some clearing to do now that the green's coming back on the trees. All this brush in the pond there's still a lot of it. Look at the frogs running around. Last night we actually came out here at like one in the morning and was shooting frogs with the 22. Let's just roll some of that footage. That's actually on Peter's channel and we'll be cooking them tonight. But also yesterday we put 550 goldfish from PetSmart in here. I want to see if I can find any of them. We've also put a bunch of minnows in here from Amazon, which is kind of cool. This pond, we're just kind of playing around with it. I got Chris from Let's Dig 18 coming later this week because we're thinking about putting an 11 acre lake right in the back half. Down this valley, right over there. But this pond's kind of just a play pond. We're stocking it with fish. That pond's going to be this serious. We're growing monsters and and, uh, spending some money and getting a uh, fish hatchery to do it upright. There's still, I mean, we shot probably 10 or 12 frogs last night that were cooking up tonight, but there's still frogs jumping everywhere. I think we got some of the big ones. Peter freaking dolphin dived on one and totally missed it. Let's, let's just roll that. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious, but uh, if you guys want to see that full video, it's on Peter's channel. Not seeing our goldfish. Oh, there's fish hitting. Yeah, something's hitting on this bank right over here. We also put a bunch of bluegill in it yesterday as well, but uh, we got to find these goldfish. We got to know that they made it. We literally bought PetSmart out. Come on now. Oh, there went a big frog. Look at those little worms. Can you guys see those? Somebody put it in the comments. What are those? I think the water receded a little bit and now we're left with this mud on the bank And these are quite literally coming up out of the mud. That's nasty. What is that? This summer We're probably gonna get this pond right and regrade it and probably come close to draining it reshaping all the banks and a uh, bunch of stuff So that'll be good. Well, we can't find any goldfish. We're gonna go ahead load it up go to the house We got to get ready for turkey season. So uh, 
Catch you guys there. Oh, baby! Guys, we made it out here back behind my parents' house. We're out here at the old BP HQ, the compound, baby. We got a big sheet of paper set up down there at 25 yards, 25 to 30. And me and Peter are actually going to be sighting in our 410s. Last year, I actually had this 410 built, and it is so badass. I got a Louis Vuitton 410. Pretty sweet. We got the red dot on her. I mean, just check it out. So sick. I had the whole thing Cerakoted. Slapped me a red dot on there. Little Jeb's choke. Extra, extra full. Since it's a 410, I kind of wanted to go all out and kind of make it, you know, kind of funny. But check it out. This thing's actually super, super sweet. I love the colors I went with. And uh, this is going to be a turkey slayer this year. This is what the gun looked like before I got a hold of it. This is your stock finish. This one's actually Peter's because, Peter, you bought one. Mine's a little decked out too. Yeah. Don't me out, man. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't just the average 410. Peter's got the red dot. He's got a little saddle right here for all his ammo. Uh, still factory choke, but you got one coming. It's on the way. We're going we're gonna to get it right. Now, I've yet to shoot my gun and pattern it. So uh, it's time to get that done. Now, I got this lowered rail right here for my red dot. And Peter does not. So this might be some kind of an issue with this sight being too high. Little worried his sight's going to bottom out and still not be on target. Like you're not going to be able to move that red dot any lower. We got a couple different brands of TSS. This TSS is killer. That's not TSS. TSS is the good stuff. Yeah, it's also $10 a show <laughs> right now. This is what Peter's shooting at the target for hey, the target man. loads. $21 for 10. Yeah, $21 for 10. That ain't bad. 50 bucks for five. Mm, that's pretty rough. But I'm hoping I can sight this thing in in like two shots. We're just going to see how this goes. <laughs> it's not going to be in two shots. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab my headset. Peter, care if I shoot first real quick? Got it. All right, so uh, little 410 turkey killer right there. That TSS is fire. Let's load one into the pipe. Get this red dot on. I kind of don't know why we're going to be shooting off of uh, a lead sled, but here we go. I grabbed this lead sled because my thought behind it is we can lock the gun down and move the sight on target like a one-shot sight in. <sighs> I don't think it's going to work that way, but we're, we're going to try. Let's send one. Hammer's locked. Fire in the hole. Let's go see where my first pattern hit. Hopefully we're somewhat on, but that red dot does not look like it lines up. It looks like it'd be hitting way left. And we're hitting to the right. It's really thick right there. That's kind of not the best pattern in the world because it's thick right here, then right here, and then it spreads out over here. I don't know. Maybe that was an Uzi. Dead turkey though. You got two. Yeah, it would have been a dead <laughs> turkey. I'm going to put a little mark on the paper right here so I can see it. Try to adjust that sight, see what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock my little switches, my dials. Now I'm going to put this thing on target. This is a rig right here what a setup we got going oh yeah this is not gonna work but we're gonna try it now we need to go down i feel like that actually worked let me lock these in place and we'll try it throw another one in the pipe fire in the hole let's go take a look you gotta love a 410 such a fun gun to shoot see what it's looking like i went too far the other way <laughs> Jeez, dude. I need to come back to here. But it's close. We got a lot closer. I moved the dot to there, but apparently it more so moved it to there. We want to move the dot to here now. There's 20 bucks. Let's see uh, if we can get it done in 30. Let's go see if that one's right. That's pretty close. We need it to get right there. Get in there. Kind of hurt shooting out of the lead slit of all things. I hate that gap right there. Tear it down. All right, guys. So uh, I think the center of the shot's right there. Center of the shot's right there. That was actually two different ammos, but they're pretty much the same. I like this stuff. I think that was the uh, front. What's the name of that stuff? I don't know. Something with a V. We're going to shoot a load in this light up target so you guys can see it. And when, normally when I'm shooting at a turkey, I aim right there on them where this, the feathers meet the head. So uh, we'll see what we do. So the federal didn't group as good as the the golden turkey. The fronky. Fronchy. Something like that. Fuchai. But uh, the fruit fuchai. That's it. Well, we're going to shoot some of this and uh, see what we can do. One day I'll get out here and go real in depth. See what it's doing at 40 yards, 50 yards, so on and so forth. But I just want to get this thing good enough to hunt. We'll see that target light up. Fire with the cannon. That's a dead turkey. That's a pretty dead turkey right there. So again, this is about probably 27 yards. Yeah, once you shoot it on this target, you see how much better it is. That's a dead son of a gun. Yeah, I was aiming right there. So that's that's pretty center in the shots. We're going to run that. That should be good. We got to get Peter's gun sighted in. But I just want everyone to know, I'm going for the turkeys this year. This is going to be good. I'm ready to hunt. The turkey's within 40 yards of that 410. It is game over. Probably 50, but we'll probably not stretch it that far. That's, that's pushing. That's pushing with the 410. But that TSS puts it down. That was a pretty good pattern. Yeah. The pattern's very evenly spread, which is uh, what you're looking for. So you guys better expect Bray's going to kill a turkey with this Louis Vuitton 410 this year. Now we got a lot of stuff to do to prep for turkey season. We got the gun dialed in. We're going to have to go down to the deer club, start getting stuff set up for turkey hunting. But we're going to go ahead and get his gun dialed in. It should be fun. Opening day's coming up quick. You guys stay tuned. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch y'all on the next one. All right.